dead people. Can't do that. Can't do that. Yes, you can. Stop telling me you can't get up here. I know you can. We need to loot this but Oh, no, there's... Come out, you cowards. Who is that? Who are these guys? Honor guards? Who's the honor guards? Sun soldiers? Outrunners. I'm assuming they're working for the, um... The, the people we're fighting. Alright, well, we're not being left with much option. Looks like we're gonna have to confront whoever this is. Come at me, grave me. I see they, uh... They immediately want to fuck us up. Alright. There we go. Reputation? Uh-oh. You there, you're not with the Oathbreakers. No, I'm I'm not with the Oathbreakers. You back up, Verse? You alright? Seem like you're a little uh, a little injured, Verse. These guys have no loot on them. Oh, that's that's extremely disappointing. Yeah, we're gonna go talk to them. We're gonna talk to them, alright. We just gotta look around real quick, make sure there's nothing here I want. Might be some sweet treasure chests just off to the side, no? Okay, alright. We'll come talk to you. Hey, what's going on, man? Hellspar? Who is this? Uh, who are you with? The disfavored, okay. Ah, Fate Binder, how fortuitous. The Earthshaker pounds his chest in salute. For us, I mean, decidedly not for the Oathbreakers. A smirk quirks to the right side of his mouth as he surveys the carnage you left behind. Whether intended or not, you're... We're indebted to your help. Disfavored, we've gained some shit with them, okay. Um, let's see. Where's the rest of you? Was part of your squad killed or otherwise separated? Aye, the Oathbreak has felled Gristadir before we could erect the barricade, but our circle alone was all Master Radix could feasibly spare. We're here, and th though wayworn, we're ready to help. Um, wait, your commander isn't even here? With all due respect, Fatebinder, it's not a matter I'd expect you to understand. We absolutely cannot abandon Karn or the Stone Sea, his nostrils flare in mid-ire. As we've only recently located him, are in the process of constructing a fort to guard his remains. We cannot spare another mage, especially now when the beast tribe that flocked to Kine, uh, Karn is in the final days of becoming increasingly territorial and contentious. Alright. And so Radix refused, refused Ash's orders. I'm not of a rank to make such sweeping evaluations, the Earth Shaker stumbles slightly over his words. But I'd say he interpreted them in his own manner and to the best of his judgment rather than outright refusing them. He is an Iron Guard, after all. His decisions, though difficult to make as they may be, will certainly embolden our routing of the tears. Um... Not if your general and his entire army is dead. He chokes, and the Earthshakers behind him gather closer, murmuring in surprise amongst themselves. One of them, a woman with wispy, russet hair, slaps him on the back so hard shockwaves tremble through you and into the mountainous pass. Uh, if they what? He, he gasps for breath. How? Uh... The Overlord has issued an edict of execution. If we don't take the well by Kairos' day of swords, everyone here will die, including Ash. Well, clearly Master Radix was unaware of the severity of the situation. He glances worriedly to the other mages in a circle as they all visibly absorb the meaning of everyone here in the edict's range of affliction. Had we known, assuredly the guild would have come in full force. 
Um, yeah, all right, whatever. Regardless, it looks like you're all we've got. Report to Cervix at the disfavored camp. He'll have further orders for you there. With a shaky nod and even shakier salute, the Earthshaker, there's just a lot of shaking going on, gathers his circle and uh, cloistered together, murmuring or perhaps chanting in hushed voices, the battle mages march towards the valley. Yeah, get on over to the fight. I gotta go return to Cervix. Ah, oh, man. If I go back to fucking Cervix, or whatever the fuck his name is, it's just gonna eat up more time. We only have seven days till the... Day of Swords, and everybody fucking dies. Hmm. Have a look here. Ah, good, good find, Viper. Blood Moss. I have no idea what that does. Can't do that. Oh, you can't do that, Viper. Well, let's see. This was the northern clearing. Do we not have anything else to do at the northern clearing? Do I have more missives? Um. The Earthshaker reinforcements. Yeah, so I gotta go back. For the safe, somewhere around the Echo Call Crossing. Echo Call Crossing. Okay. The Battle of Echo Call Crossing. So where is Echo Call Crossing? Oh, right, right. What's this? Unnerving Presence. Nearby enemies receive a penalty to accuracy. Well, that's helpful, I guess. We've killed a lot of Veerdents. <laughs> oh, the Veerdents are not happy. Who the fuck is Blood and Mark? Well, either way... Oh, the Archon of Shadows, okay. Alright, well... I don't think we can do whatever crossing because I don't actually have that on my map right I can't just uh, I can't just leave all right we got to go back to the disfavored camp hey it's our uh, our buddy fake limp let's see what he's got to say nothing further to the city you fate binder I'd hate to be fate Fake loop. Did you guys not tell the, uh, the what's his name? The Archon guy? Yeah, he's probably gonna be pissed off. Sorry about that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is that camp. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, we have a new missive from, uh, Tuon. Viper, perhaps your continued and faithful service shall remind the Archons of their duties to the Overlord. One can hope. May fortune favor your endeavor, Tuon, the educator of justice. Well, Tuon, I appreciate your faith in me. Did I ever talk to you? A young woman stands, flanked by a pair of soldiers, the ornate headdress cr uh, cresting her brow, Lan uh, lends her otherwise small figure an intimidating aspect from gear to gown. Everything about her starkly contrasts the wretched state of the kid. Of the camp, she looks both at ease and uncomfortable, composed in her element and completely unsure. She turns to you. Greetings, worm. Uh, her voice takes you off your guard. It is bare of any inflection and yet full of beautiful music. If you didn't know any better, you would have guessed that she is actively suppressing or modulating her voice tone, her vocal tone. Uh, Siren is the Archon of Song and the youngest Archon sent to conquer the Tears. Young and inexperienced, Siren is sworn to the voices of Nirat, who uses her power of charm and manipulation to swell the ranks of the Scarlet Chorus with volunteers. You look familiar. Have we met? You don't know me, little worm? I am Siren, and my degenerate allies have the pleasure of calling me the Archon of Song. You hear the distant peal of a bell in her laugh. She regards you for a moment with dim interest. And you are Tunon's fate finder. What brings you here to the middle of the battlefield? Did Cairo send you to shame Ash and Nerat into action? 
Listen, all right, we're on the same side. You need to just. Ash certainly needs someone to dig a heel into his back, only to distract him from his problem. She purses her lips in thought. But Narat, he's just a cat playing with a realm-sized mouse, isn't he? Um, and what makes you an expert in such delicate matters? I've been privy to more delicate matters in the last five years than you've had your entire career. Are you sure about that? Finding fates. I'm well versed with political intricacies. Hmm. She waves her hand, brushing away the conversation. Anyway, we have a more important matter to deal with. There is something you can do to assist me. Okay. From the corner of your eye, you see Verse cup her hands to her ears, turning her head away from Siren. Siren's mouth opens in a perfect O shape, and the sound that pours out is captivating, entrancing. It dampens the ambient bustle of the camp until it seems that nothing exists but her voice. Remove my helmet. Oh, this sounds like a really bad idea. The ruby headpiece on her brow flashes as if in warning. I don't have enough lore. I cannot say no. Um, hmm. Right away, you're a pleasant one. You discover that Siren's helmet is locked behind her head with a complicated mechanism. You want nothing more than to bash the lock apart and free the Archon, satisfying her command. Before you can make the attempt, one of Siren's guard places her hand on yours and shakes her head. She points to a wad of cotton sticking in her ear. The distraction shakes you from your stupor. You feel dizzy and stiff. Back, uh trickle of blood from your nose oh snip that yeah, yeah, yeah. glare really that's it how disappointing it was worth a try I suppose though it appears to have been a colossal waste of effort she sighs and gives a sheepish smile I hoped you would assist me in a delicate matter but it appears you're more nuisance than help Wow I have no further use for you perhaps later you're dismissed, Fatebinder. She brushes you away with a wave. Ugh. You will answer some questions for me first. I said dismissed until I have further need of you. Your presence displeases me. Bitch, I don't give a fuck. This time her voice, voice takes on a different quality. It screeches like a piece of flint stuck in a grinding wheel, you can feel it down to your toes, and you want nothing more than to make a hasty exit before the Ark kind of flicks more of her terrifying song. For the love of Kairos, that was the Archon of Song in the flesh. Yeah, she's a cunt, darting his head for a fur uh, furtive look back at Siren. Lantry sighs in awe. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Don't be so dumbstruck. Dumbstruck? I don't exactly meet Archons on a regular basis. Maybe to you, this is just Judge's Day. Yeah, well, get used to it, asshole. Lantry, you're, you're a piece of shit too, you know that? And this bitch... I just wanted to find out, like, if you had something you needed me to do. It's all. Could have did a quest for you. What the fuck is this? A night yowl? What the fuck? A young beast man stands in the shadow of an enormous beast woman whose stature still manages to loom over you. Even in her crouched position, the beast man's mouth froths with spittle that launches in every direction as he snarls at her. Night yowl was promised worthy. Tough prey for joining. But beast woman only allows night yowl to hunt weakest of, wo of humans. Save. Best kill for self. He pours the earth, causing a small fissure to erupt. Uh, Night Yell was second strongest of stone stalkers, the largest spanning beast tribe in the entirety of the tiers. The stone stalkers of Azure nearly tripled in population during a period of domestication in forced labor and service to the farmers and ranchers of the realm. However, like all beasts, the stone, uh, stone stalkers were born wild and yearned to range free, unaffected, unf 
fettered by humans within their own homeland. Males, before joining the scarlet humans, rotted even with hundred blood. There was Tribes Prima, the leader of the beast tribe of supremacy, always, uh, almost always held by a female. This rank is won and defended through vicious bloodshed and fights for dominance rather than birthright. Many alphas may exist within a single tribe, but only one can rise above the others as Prima was promised her own pack for abandoning tribe's mate. The crouched beast woman lets out a deafening cackle, her, uh, her broad, sharp teeth appearing between each bellow. Strong stone stalker, beast man worth rutting, she snarls. No claws at throat sees only mewling first season cub before beast woman now sees only tenderfoot, only weak whelp fit to chase injured dying prey, not best fighters on battlefield. Night Yowl bares his teeth and lunges for the beast woman, but she is swift in stance, hackles raised and callous palms far larger than his head harshly pins him to the ground in one daft swipe his face smashes into the earth with a whip-like crack of stone followed by a defeated whimper claws at throat stares down at you with as much regard as she might show the wild dogs that roam the camp human her nostrils flare she inhales deeply scouring her memory for your familiar scent then she cants her head curiously to one side and her keen amber eyes darken with a sudden and feral desire. Human smells of kith, a far northern tribe, is strange. Human is hairless and blunt clawed, but smells good, smells better than Nita Yowl. She grinds the beast man's face deeper into the dirt before lifting her claws and gnarled fingers off him. She quickly sc scrambles to his feet to nurse his head. Speak quickly, and maybe Beast Woman will listen. Um. Oh. Um. Hunter, bare your teeth in a wild, dangerous grin. You smelled right. I was a member of the Bounding Viper tribe, raised as the Prima's own brood. Scarlet Chorus. Stone walkers. Yeah. The beast woman perks up at your boast. She sniffs you curiously, more thoroughly than before, and she smacks her lips softly, longingly, beginning to slather the drool. For a moment, you think she'll make a grab for you, but she merely sits back on her haunches, relaxed and watching you, pleasantly peaked as she scratches the taut stretch of her hard muscled stomach. Would you like to hunt with human from Bounding Viper Tribe? Little Blunt Claw will join Beast Woman in hot slaughter of humans in one season soon, yes? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, we could go kill some people or something. It's fine. Um, what's going on here? <laughs> Human has keen eyes, yes. Can see Beast Woman is disciplining insolent pack meat. She snaps a menacing sneer at the crowd, a coward beast man. Mewling, whimpering male. Night Yowl will learn Beast Man's rank in new pack, or will not survive for many seasons longer. A soft growl burbles up from the back of his throat in response to her threat but he keeps his eyes downcast, refusing to meet her gaze. How did you come to join the Scarlet Chorus? Human pack called Scarlet Chorus is vicious, cunning, feral, like tribes, like beast woman. She snarls, but the sound is pleased with a rumbling, nearly a purr, as she cranes her face in the direction of the voices of Nerat's war tent, Chorus humans are dirty and reek like rotten meat, so easily shriek and tear at own throats, but also respect strongest of pack 
and beast woman, our strongest of all creatures, our best predators, like Archon called Nierat, Pax fierce and ruthless Alpha, is mystic who can swallow prey, blood and bone whole, makes beast woman want to rut, fight, kill. Makes beast woman want to rut, fight, kill, she sighs hungrily, makes beast woman want. All oh, right, I, I'm assuming rut means fucking. You can just say fucking, you know. Uh, what tribe are you from, beast? She puffs her dirty, hairy teats and purrs with pride. Claw at throat was born of tribe with no name and no lands. Called Summer Snout by tri tearsmen who stole azure lands from tribe's ancestors. Then Claw's at throat became great stone stalker slaughtered own slavers, and fought for tribe's freedom, tribe who became strong, unbreakable, as stone, because of earth mystic called Archon Karn. She sniffs at the memory, but now Karn sleeps with dreams, drifting slowly into death in stone, lands hundred, blood protects free tribe, and claws at throat fights to kill more cheersmen, as Scarlet Stalker. I wager I could take you. The Beast Woman snorts a stab of inc uh, incredulity, opening the features of her face. Then she howls with racking, full-bodied laughter. Human is bold as Kith, is born hunter like Beast Woman. If Claws at Throat did not have rut, Whelp cur like night yowl to train. Beast woman would happily enjoy fighting with human. Oh, okay. Farewell. It was, I guess, it was pretty nice talking to you, actually. It accomplished quite a bit. Hey, Reg, you got anything you want to say? Do you feel strange? <laughs> yeah, Reg rubs his shoulder nervously. Ever since the Fate Binders spoke Kairos' edict, I've felt like bugs were crawling under my skin. They notice your approach with mixed expressions. Oh, didn't see you there, Fate Binder. Anything we could do for you? Oh, I didn't even realize there was a... Uh... Oh, filthy mongrels. You're not going to say anything important, are you? Veard and Gardel and Durr? Uh, of course. Well, I suppose we should talk to you. He nods curtly, his greeting, uh, greeting little more than a grunt, Fate Binder. Is it too much to hope you come to distract me from the shit existence that is my life in this Kairos forsaken chorus camp? No, not really. I guess we already talked to you, huh? Now, who was the guy? The guy's around here somewhere, isn't he? Is it you? It's one of you. Death Knell? Right? Fate Binder. Death Knell nods in your direction. What do you need? Apparently nothing. The fifth eye, commander of the local Scarlet Corps, surveying his camp, watching in stillness as all manner of violence and revelry occur around him. He offers a slight nod at your approach. Was there anything else? What can you tell me about Ascension Hall? At the center of Verdant's well, at the base of the mountain spire, he points at the northeast where the spire cuts a vertical line rising above all other mountains on the horizon, is a small fortification. Ascension Hall is the name of the citadel's inner council chamber. We had left a garrison when this valley was first taken in 429, with the citadel being their base of operations. When the Oathbreakers staged their revolt, the garrison at Ascension Hall was defeated, Makes sense that Cairo's edict would demand that we burn this rebellion back to its point of origin. What do you know of this favored commander? Iron Marshal Aranos is a dotting warrior. A warrior, just like the Archon of War. She's one of a few select disfavored, cautious, and cowardly enough to be trusted with the Archon's iron toddlers. No doubt her primary qualifications include being related to Ash. The Legion's a little big in its pedigree if you catch my drift. Though I am loath to speak highly of her, I cannot deny she is a brilliant swordswoman, swordsman, and the other disfavored seem to take her seriously, despite the serious stick that's propped up her backside. Well then, guess we'll just...
fuck off. I'm gonna talk to our friend Cervix here. With all due respect, our cohorts have proven themselves against these Apex fools time and time again. What can your Earth Shakers do other than get in the way? I don't want to be here, Cervix, and my orders don't involve proving our value to you. If the great general doesn't want magic on his side, then he can order us to stand down and sit this one out. I don't question what your mages bring to the table, Hellspur, but I have my reservations about your leaders. Why wouldn't Radix show up to the siege himself if he has more pressing issues than the state of the conquest? I should like to hear about it from his mouth. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say nothing. I don't know who this Radix is. If we conclude that Radix is ignoring his duties, then he'll need to be replaced. I don't take any pleasure from the idea, but we may have to take the steps if he proves intractable. Emerald Pan. I hate to upset the chain of command during a time of war. Perhaps Radix's brother can convince him to remember his duty. Fatebinder. I thank you for the part you played. You didn't have to risk yourself, but you did so all the same. Alright. Well, thank you for the, the money. You got anything else you need me to do, Cervix? Welcome back, Fatebinder. Cervix crosses his arms. No, you don't. What about you? Can I talk to you? Who are you? Iron Marshal. I can't talk to you. I can't talk to Hellspur either. I can talk to Horde. You got nothing to say. Who's this Ronda? Come here, Ronda. No time for chatter, huh? Well, fuck you too, Ronda. Just wanted to know who you were. Just wanted to get to know you a little bit, Ronda. You have to be a bitch about it. Why does that guy got a sack? Ah, there's more earth shakers. Is there anybody I can... Oh, who's this? Bit equipped back again. Bitequip looks at you up and down, his face unamused. Have you so little to do besides standing around to his favorite camp? Well, nobody will tell me what I'm supposed to do. Bitequip looks at you impatiently. What is it like working for the disfavored? He scoffs, looking away from you for a moment before sniffing and returning his attention to you. Reporting to the Iron Hag is an insult. She fought one duel for her title, one, and her leadership must be continuously proven earned and defended. Weakness should bleed to the bottom of the army, not rise to the top. My assignment here is also an insult, but one I will bear for the good of the chorus. Bitterquip sniffs, his a sniffs the air, smiling with one side of his mouth, if only to see with my own eyes the failure of the disfavored. That will be a fine day. Farewell, yes. Yes, farewell, Bitterquip. All these earth shakers and not a damn one of you wants to say shit to me, huh? Hey Marcus. I am Lucia. This is Marcus. The disfavored soldier points to the armored man next to her, and you must be the fate binder. From under her helmet you hear an audible scoff. We've been assigned to babysit assigned to your hospitality, Marcus quickly injects, when you remain on disfavored grounds. If you should need a place to rest, we can make the necessary preparations. What can we do for you? Is there any sport to be found in Apex? Or do we only fight among us ourselves? If you're referring to game, the Chorus hunted many of the animals to obscurity on the first wave of the conquest. Most of the meat we have to spare is salted and perhaps more importantly, northern. I don't trust southerners to keep their livestock nourished. Yeah. The few animals we keep in the pens or pits are for higher officers. I'm sure you're entitled to a haunch of something or other, and I'd love to watch you eat it just to remember the taste of fresh meat. Um, oh, you guys can do training. Perry. I don't need fucking Perry. 
What does this look like? I don't know why, but that's what I heard. Makes you wonder about the Fate Binders' loyalty. Are two non and the voices can spot? Oh, greetings, Fate Binder. Marcus calls over to Lucia. I see you've returned. Oh, you guys are... Finally, some fun to break up the monotony of this siege. I can learn more dodge. Or athletics. Should you learn some athletic? Nah. I can teach your one-handed weapons, but I don't really see the point. Yeah, nah, nah, it's fine. I don't need that. I can have them rest. They are kind of wounded. 